YouTube. So today is March 25th of 2019. My name is Brittany. If you haven't been on my page, um, this is your first time running across any video of mine. I'm here just to, to tell, you know, to witness and tell what God has shown me through dreams and visions and what I've heard from the voice of the Lord. Um, I'm so grateful and so thankful to be a vessel. If you're watching this video, please rest assured that I am not perfect. God didn't choose me because I'm perfect. He chose me because he chose to choose me. You know, I don't know. I don't know why. I still don't know why. But I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful. I'm grateful because he didn't have to. <laughs> he didn't have to. But I'm so grateful to be able to share what I know. And um, this dream actually it's a dream and vision um and words all you know all in one night that i that i got from the lord on december the 18th of 2016 and i just you know i just want to give all praise honor and glory to god because he's so awesome he's so awesome y'all he's awesome he's awesome and he's so worthy to be praised he's so you know we don't lift him up enough they've taken god out of out of school you know, we can't even say a prayer no more. You can't read your Bible without somebody calling you holier than thou. He's awesome and he's worthy to be praised. And if you pay close attention, there's a reason why they have stopped doing these things. Don't you know that people know things? People know things beyond our understanding. And they want to keep us numb down to this tradition and this... Uh, repetition whatever it's called i don't know but god is way bigger than what what people are teaching right now mm, he's so much bigger than what people are teaching right now okay he's bigger and i'm so thankful i am so thankful because i was lost before no i'm not all the way found as far as me knowing everything but God knows he's brought me a mighty long way. He's brought me a long way. And I'm so, so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Y'all don't know. I'm so glad that he took time out for me. I'm glad that he took time out for me. And I'm glad that I'm able to have the courage and the strength to talk about what he's given me. I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm thankful. He was merciful, okay? And I want people to know that he can be merciful to you too. If you haven't known him, if you don't know Jesus, I always say this in my videos, to get on your knees and just tell Jesus that you don't know him, but you want to get to know him. And to ask him to reveal himself to you because he'll do it on his timing. But we have to be patient. And we have to want it. And we have to be ready to accept it the way he gives it. It was nothing that I did for him to want to use me. He already had this predestined. He says, I knew you. He said before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And he called us. He called me to do what he wants me to do. And some may not understand it right now. But it's okay. I'm doing it because I'm I'm being obedient and because I believe in what God has told me and because I know that this ministry that he has me starting just by doing these videos is going to grow into something really, really mighty. So I want to pray before I get started. I'm not sad. Okay, don't don't confuse my crying for being sad. I get really emotional when I start really thinking about what God has done for me. And where, how Jesus has really kept me. And I didn't realize he was keeping me when I was not thinking about him. I just, oh God, he's so awesome. He's awesome. But let me pray and I'm going to move on and, and get, this, get this done. Most Holy Father, you're so awesome and so wonderful. I come before you in Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Just giving you praise, honor, and glory for allowing me to be a vessel to be able to speak to your people thank you for this day that you have blessed us with lord i ask that you would just be a covering over me as i speak 
And whatever I say, Heavenly Father, please give me the revelation through your Holy Spirit to be able to present this the way you want it to be presented. So that whoever is supposed to hear this message and be touched by God, that, that your will will be done. I want to give you thanks for just being the God of all gods. And I just pray for those who are lost and don't know you. That they might one day submit themselves to you. To have a relationship with you. To know that you are a healer. You are a redeemer. You still move mountains. You still perform miracle signs and wonders. He still does it. I thank you Holy Father for being who you are. Please show yourself mighty to your people. Please continue to be merciful God as we heed the warnings that you're sending out through your servants. And Lord, if there be any error in our lives, I pray that you will remove the sin from our lives and purge us and cleanse us. Make us righteous before your sight. So that we may be counted worthy to dwell with you. And in Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. Okay, so just to get on with this. This particular dream and vision and words was about... It was it was three different meanings. But um to start, it started out as me seeing oh so first of all let me say this. When I was a kid, I never liked the nightmare on M Street movies, okay? Freddy Krueger was just really eerie to me. And there was something about it, even as a kid that I knew wasn't right. But you know, as I got older, I understood that as the representation of the devil, you know, the evil. When the enemy comes to you, he can transform himself. You know, this is me comparing that character to the enemy, okay? He can transform himself into anything. And when he comes to us, he doesn't come to us as this two-horned red devil that most people, you know, describe him as. He comes to us as our desires, the deepest things in our heart that we want. That's probably probably of the flesh. And... um that's how he presents himself. So, you know, in those movies, I used to find it really odd that he can make himself into, you know, the TV. You know, he can turn himself into the TV. You know, he can get inside a waterbed. He can get inside of, you know, people, turn himself into somebody else. The enemy can do just that. That's what the spirits do. They go from person to person, thing to thing. They can do whatever they want to do. And so long story short, in this vision... The enemy, I saw him, and it was Freddy Krueger, which he was representing the devil. And he was bent over as if he was bowing down, like, after you perform, you bow, right? And he had flames all around him and through him, but he was not being, like, consumed by the fire. He wasn't being consumed by the fire. He was just simply in the fire, right? And he had this... You know, I, I remember just seeing his face and I don't know if he was smiling or not. I just remember seeing his face, but he bowed in this dream and in my spirit, I heard in my spirit, hell on earth. This was December 18th of 2016. Around that time, a lot of things and prophecy were unfolding, uh, excuse me, unfolding and, you know, people, uh, people, it's just all kinds of things just going on. But, um, I heard in my spirit, hell on earth. So, you know, I know what it is to bow, but I looked up the definition just to, you know, because a lot of times you, you know something, but when you look up the definition, you really get the revelation you need by understanding the, the, um, the depth of the definition. And it says, um, to bow means to bend the head or the upper part of the body as a sign of respect, greeting, or shame. So the context that's being used in this particular dream, when he bowed, it was not that he was finishing anything. Yeah, excuse me, anything. He was beginning. But he was bound before he even started. And as far as respect goes, it was like bowing as if you're going to respect me kind of thing. It's not like um, I wasn't showing him respect. That's not what I'm saying. When I'm talking about respect, it was like he was coming demanding the respect, okay? And he was greeting himself like a here I come kind of thing. And so it was really short, but then I woke up. Okay, I'm sitting on a couch. I wake up and to pray and I try to go back to sleep. But of course, I couldn't after something like that. So I laid on the couch, just quiet. 
I was just quiet, trying to go back to sleep. And you know how it is when you're laying there and then you, you, I guess you're in between like sleep and awake. And I hear the voice say, today is the 18th plus three days is the 21st. So there is some significance about December 21st um, for me. And I'll tell you about that at the end of this video when I finish. But then as I hear that, you know, I pop up again because I'm like, dang, you know, I heard that voice. And it was, it, it was, it was, it was of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't nothing bad. Um, so then I try to go back to sleep again. And as I was in this state again between sleep and awake, I vividly see. Now this part was beautiful to me. Um. Because it was like, I see the enemy. And then here's this, you know, this saying, today's the 18th plus three days is the 21st. And then I go into this part of, this was a vision because I was not all the way asleep. I couldn't really go back to sleep after those two things had happened. And I was at the church that I go to now. Um, and I see this, it was a male choir standing at the front of the church. And I understand why it's a male choir now. It was a male choir. And they had on these beautiful white shirts. But this white was a glowing, illuminate white. It was radiant. It was beautiful. And, and and most of the time when I dream about this color white, you know, I know it's representing something heavenly. And and it has to do with Jesus. And it, it was beautiful. And they were standing there at the front of the church. And the person that was in the front leading. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's Revelation. Leading the choir was a person who goes to the church I go to his name is Herbert and he was just smiling you know and they were singing white cavalry and it was real upbeat tempo white cavalry white cavalry that's what they kept saying white cavalry over and over and over and over again and I knew it was a message you know and I oh man y'all you don't understand I knew it was a message white cavalry white cavalry white cavalry and they just kept saying and they were just it was just beautiful. It was serene. Like the voices were pure and crisp and it was something positive, you know. And so then I woke up and I was up for the morning after that. And so you have no idea how much I looked up. Like I tried to look up the meaning of the name Herbert, right? And I could not find nothing. It wasn't time yet. You know, for some reason, I couldn't find nothing. And as easy as it is to type something in on Google and go look up what something means, I couldn't get it because it wasn't time yet. I just got it this year. And uh, and for some that may be, you know, oh, that's easy. No, God does things on his own timing. He didn't want me to know because at that particular time, it wasn't time for me to be doing what I'm doing right now. He, he's been giving me revelation of the dreams that I've had to that I had two and three years ago. Well, two years ago, really, because at the end of this year, it will be three years where he was you know been heavily heavily dealing with me with the dreams and stuff and so to break this down first of all the male choir actually I'll talk about the male choir last so the white that glowing beautiful white is representing something really heavenly okay and um I got a couple of scriptures that I'm gonna read that's talking about that that white linen <laughs> But the name Herbert, so it's it comes is is German apparently. This is what I found when I researched the name Herbert is German, and it's talking about um, it's talking okay so H E R, which it comes from the the original I guess the original writing, Harry, H E R I, which means army. That's okay, army. And then Bert, B-E-R-T, which they spell it B-E-R-H-T in German, means bright or famous. And the definition for this name is uh, excellent army or ruler. So that person standing in front was a representation of Jesus. That choir that was singing those beautiful white shirts were a representation of the heavenly hosts that are going to be following him, y'all. Okay? On his return. He's coming back. He's coming back and we're going to, we are that generation. Okay. There's no more tiptoeing about it. We are that generation that's going to see the return of Jesus Christ. And people keep saying that we have these, this long time. We don't have this long time. I don't want to be somebody who's getting on here giving dates. Cause I have not been given a date. 
I know what I've heard and I know what God has confirmed for me, but he has not specifically put that in my dreams or visions or anything that he's given me to say, tell them this date. Okay. So I'm not going to say that, but I do know that we don't have a hundred years. We don't have that time. We don't. We are the generation that's going to see the return of Jesus. We're going to see the antichrist. We're going to see all of that. So moving on about this, the, 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 the symbolism of the things in this dream, white cavalry, like the white is representing the pure, clean, fine linen, like cleanliness and cavalry. When I looked up the definition of cavalry, we know that cavalry is the place where Jesus died. They call it the place of the school, Golgotha. That's what they call that. But also another definition for cavalry. I'm smiling because it just tripped me out because you don't understand how, how I researched this and until it was time God didn't give it to me. And now I'm here and just it's just awesome to be able to be telling what this means and how beautiful the symbolism is. Cavalry is a group of soldiers who fight on horses. Traditionally, a cavalry is a unit of troops on horseback. I got a scripture to read that talks about that army, that group of troops on horseback. And it comes from Revelation 19, verse 11 through 14. And I'm just going to read it real quick because it's just so beautiful. And it says, and I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he thus judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And it says, verse 14 says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. I, <laughs> I'm laughing because a lot of the scriptures that I have talked about in the past videos, a lot of them come from Revelation because God is at that time. He was dealing with me a lot in Revelation. We are living out Revelation right now, even now in 2019. But um, that's where he started me at in Revelation at the back of the book. He started me in Revelation. So to keep on going um, about this, the heavenly armies, and you know, they were singing in this dream, in this vision, saying white cavalry, white cavalry. They were praising him. That was praise. That was, they were praising him, y'all. And so <laughs> um, Luke 2 and 13 was a scripture that I was led to today to actually fit into this video. But as I put it up on my iPad, it was confirmation because I had already had it highlighted from I don't even know when. I don't even know when I did this. I just know that it was highlighted in green. And green is representation of life. Okay? Y'all have to understand. This is so awesome. So anyways, Luke 2 and 13, it says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on the earth peace, goodwill toward men. But the, the, the point of that scripture is talking about the heavenly host praising God. They were saying white cavalry. They were letting us know that Jesus is coming. They are the army that's coming with him. And actually the army that's coming with him are the chosen, the chosen people, the heavenly host and the chosen bridal army are coming with him. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> and, um. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything. I have one more scripture. Let me look it up right here. Oh, I'm going to read this one too because it's talking about the uh, his holy angels coming with him. It says, when the son of man shall come in his glory. Sorry, it's Matthew 25 and 31. It says, when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then... Shall he sit up on the throne of his glory? My God, like, y'all, he's coming as the judge and the savior. So to go back to what I said about the male choir, the reason why it was men, because it was representing the troops. You know, yeah, there are women troops, but the the the, the full representation of this was that the, the men were the troops, the army. 
and they were singing. They had on the white linen, which represented them on those white horses, ushering in the return of Jesus Christ coming back for his people, y'all. It's a beautiful thing, but it can be scary as well. But like I said, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He didn't call for us to be fearful. How do you get past fear? By submitting yourself to Jesus Christ. How do you submit yourself to Jesus Christ? Take the step. The first step is getting on your knees to let Jesus know and being honest with him that you don't know him, but you want to get to know him and you want to have a relationship with him. Ask him to help you in those weak areas where you don't think you can handle whatever he's going to give. Even if you don't know what he's going to give, you know that there are whatever you fear about coming to Jesus. Pour that out to him and tell him. Just like you would talk to your friends sitting right beside you and say, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. Tell Jesus, I'm afraid of this. This is why I haven't come to you. I haven't been sure about you because of what I heard or because of what I think. Please remove any doubt, any fear, any unbelief that is within me that is hindering me from being near you. And then ask him to forgive you for all your sins. You know, ask him to clean you and to purge you, to purify you, to bless your mind, to be able to understand through his Holy Spirit. He will do it, but he'll do it on his timing. So we have to understand that coming to Jesus, that means that when you decide to choose Jesus, you're against the enemy automatically. So the enemy... I don't want people to, to think that when you come to Jesus that, you know, that it's going to be just peaches and cream. Your spirit man will be very well alive. Your spirit man is going to be victorious through Christ. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is going to strengthen that spirit man because that's the reality. The spirit, the spirit world is the reality, y'all. This physical life that we're living People can say what they want to say. God knew what it was going to be. But the reality is the spirit world. Because when we die, guess where we go? We go to the spirit realm. That's the world that's always existed. And that's another story. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that where it is. But I just want you to know that your spirit man is more important than this, this flesh. And when we come to Jesus, we have to lay down some things. You can come to him just how you are. But when you encounter, when you have an encounter with him, you won't stay the same. And it's beautiful, but you have to understand when you come to Jesus, you have to begin to study his word and know what weapons we have in the word. The word is the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, the sword that your spirit uses to fight against the evil. Because the evil is going to come in both forms, the flesh and the spirit. But the word is what keeps us. And sometimes it seems that. Even when you're reading the word, even when you know the word, that it doesn't help. But that's when he tells you that his grace is sufficient. And that he is the lifter up of our heads. And he really is. I've been through some very hard times spiritually where I thought that I wanted to give up. Where I thought that, you know, that I wasn't going to overcome certain situations in my life but glory to god glory to jesus glory to yahushua hamashiach my lord and savior jesus christ glory to his spirit for keeping me and strengthening me through those unbearable times jesus can hold you up and bring you out of whatever situation that you're in if he chooses to you know sometimes he holds us in places because he wants us to grow and he wants us to understand that he can do things even while we're going through. But the reason why, you know, he has his people coming out and talking about the things that nobody else wants to talk about is to let you know that there is hope. He does redeem. Redemption draws nigh. So, like I said, Jesus is just waiting. He loves you even though you may not know him. He loves you even though... You may feel like you're the most messed up person in the world. And he can take you and use you for the greatest assignment ever. I'm a witness. There have been many a days where I felt like I was nothing when it comes to what man thinks about me. 
and how man may have underestimated uh, whatever they may have done to me, whether it be, you know, verbally or just by action, whatever people, what if, you know, people doing things and I'm feeling less than Jesus will take you and he'll put you, he'll, he'll let you know how important you are. And then the validation of man won't even matter. It won't even matter. It never mattered. It never mattered from the beginning. But it's this right here. He can come in and change your mind. He can come in and fix your heart. He can come in and filter your mouth and do all these things that he needs to do within you so he can work within you. I dare you today to, to, to build a relationship with Jesus. Just read a scripture a day if they, if you if you can't handle reading the Bible and you think you don't understand. You got a phone? Download the Bible app. Start with the daily scriptures. Then find you a plan and study the devotionals. And I guarantee you that's sowing the seed. You want to talk about sowing the seed? I ain't talking about no money. I'm talking about sowing the seed spiritually. That's breaking ground right there on the spiritual relationship with Yahushua Hamashiach. So I hope that today, I hope that this has blessed whoever watches this you know i just god is so marvelous he's so awesome and his wonders are way beyond our understanding y'all and i hope that you know that when you come to him oh my god when it says you can rest in his his peace he can give you peace that surpasses all understanding you can be going through pure chaos on this earth but spiritually a spirit man is at peace because you know who you serve Mm, y'all be blessed.